a spiritual journey of adventure, or a clumsy stunt that cost a young man his life. The story of Chris McCandless is a tragic tale, one that inspires those who seek a wild Alaskan odyssey while coming at the chagrin of many of those who live one. Now with McCandless's story, a major motion picture, the 15-year-old tale, finds new life, likely motivating others to walk into the wild. The season's first snow has come to the Stampede Trail. Ice begins its encroachment onto the Savage River. The Savage is one of two river crossings on the Stampede, a trail seldom used, winding its way through the foothills north of Denali. This is the path that led 24-year-old Christopher McCandless into the wild 15 years ago. McCandless' story is told in the new motion picture, Into the Wild, directed by Sean Penn. It's based on the book by best-selling author John Krakow. The young wanderer hitchhikes to Alaska in search of a true wilderness experience, testing his limits, living off the land. McCandless died of starvation in an old bus 27 miles out the Stampede Trail. While the book and the movie portray McCandless as an idealistic adventurer, elevating his folk hero status, many Alaskans view his story more critically. By failing to prepare, he made a, uh, a mistake that cost him his life. That's not really emphasized either in the book or in the movie. The Stampede Trail departs the park's highway just north of Healy. About four miles out the road is the home of hunting guide Coke Wallace. Hallowed ground, man. A guy died there. He's been out to the old bus plenty of times. It's pretty amazing to see how different people react. Brent was with me when we took uh, Sean Penn and his group out there for the first time. Brent Keith is a hunting guide, too. He also offers guided trips to the bus. Men who know how to survive in the wild but temper their criticism of McCandless. We all do stupid stuff and, uh, you know, if, if we're lucky we learn from it and we don't do it again. And, and uh, in his case, I think he, he, uh, he made some mistakes and he didn't learn from them and it cost him his life. We set out by ATV down the Stampede Trail, retracing the journey McCandless took. Coke Wallace is our guy. This isn't Disneyland out here, you know. They'll reach out and bite you in the boo-boo real quick. The most hazardous part of the trip, the Teklanika River. The water is low now, as it was when McCandless crossed in the early spring of 1992. But Wallace says in the summer months, it can become a raging torrent. These rivers can change hourly. What's uh, calf deep in the morning, you can come back in the afternoon planning to cross it, and if it's been melting or raining up in the high country, it can be way steeper, deeper. It's not a difficult crossing. We motor on for roughly five hours, not passing another soul. And then, in a clearing along the trail, we come across the old International Harvester bus. Not a lot has changed in the 15 years from when McCandless was here, when he took his most famous self-portrait. Three days into McCandless's walk into the wild, he writes in his diary, Magic Bus Day. That's the day he came across this old Fairbanks City Transit System bus, 27 miles down the Stampede Trail. The bus still looks the same today, but instead of shelter, it is now a shrine. Inside, the bus is tidy. A wood stove and an old bed make up most of the space. The same mattress where McCandless died is still here. There's a little log book in here. Different people from different areas sign in. There's even like some German writing and stuff in here. The notebooks contain messages from people all over the world. Yep, yeah, here it is. This is a letter from his mom and dad. Even the notes written by Chris's parents in 1993 appear like they were written yesterday. Sunny boy, it's time to leave. The helicopter will soon arrive. I wondered briefly if it would be hard to enter your last home. The wonderful pictures you left in your final testament welcomed me in and I'm finding it difficult to leave instead. I can so appreciate the absolute joy in your eyes reported by your self-portraits. 
I too will come back to this place, Mom. We just missed Canadian Mark Patterson. He hiked out with only a 10 pound bag of rice, his own attempt to emulate McCandless. So he left here five days ago. Yeah, I guess that 10 pounds of rice wasn't gonna stretch out two weeks like he thought it was. The fact that so many would make this journey concerned some. Alex Supertramp. McCandless became trapped when he realized he couldn't get back across the Teklanika River. When the river goes up, it goes up quick, and then you're stuck. And it's raining, and it's 50 degrees. You can't get a fire started. You got a problem. Neil Logman expects the movie to draw even more young wanderers on a pilgrimage to the bus. We want people to come up here and visit us. I mean, we don't want to ruin their experience, but you know, we don't want to be pulling dead bodies out of the river. Some have even suggested hauling the bus out to deter McCandless followers. I don't see it as a sacred site. I see it as a, you know, a piece of junk that was left behind after a road building construction. Uh, project more than uh, 40 years ago. And the bus could save someone's bacon someday, you know? Shelter in stormy times, a place to warm up, dry off before you head back for the road. Could save my bacon someday. Shelter from the storm, a piece of junk or a mythical shrine. And then here's the Bible that his folks left out here. So much about the Chris McCandless story seems to contradict itself. Even Coke Wallace's opinion of the man has evolved. I think overall he's he's viewed as a, a bit of a dumbass, for lack of a better word. I mean, heck, it's printed right there on the bus. Right. And after having taken so many people out here and being around people that get emotionally choked up over it, uh, you know, I've I've got a soft spot in my heart for the guy. You know, I I think there'll be more like him that come out here woefully unprepared not knowing what they're getting into even after they read the book. After a short stay, we leave the bus as we found it. A lonely place, but knowing others will come. And you may remember the story from last week. A man in Fairbanks took the bus's instrument panel and sold it on eBay for $177. Some people think the bus won't have to be moved from that place, that it will be sold piecemeal. But today it remains largely as it was when McCandless lived in the bus for more than 100 days back in 1992. Well, hopefully they'll leave the journal and the Bible and everything yeah. intact and, there, and there not vandalize a, that. a nice plaque that his parents uh, put up in there just saying that's mm. Chris's final resting place. Oh. So when is the movie supposed to open in Alaska? Well, it's said to be coming out uh, in about two weeks up here. It's already been released in L.A. and New York, but mm. uh, about two weeks should be up here. I think a lot of people are going to go see that. I think so. Yes. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm.